Fox News published an op-ed by John Moody, Executive Vice President and Executive Editor, Wednesday titled In the Olympics, Let's Focus on the Winner of the Race, Not the Race of the Winner, Only to Pull the Peace Under Pressure from Identity Politics Lobbyists and Left-Leaning Media. By Friday, Fox had removed the editorial, which criticized the heavy focus on the racial and sexual diversity of the American team at the upcoming Winter Olympics at Byeong Chang, South Korea, to the detriment of the traditional emphasis on athletic prowess, from their website without an explanatory note. When asked, a Fox News representative told Breitbart News only that John Moody's column does not reflect the views or values of Fox News and has been removed. In his op-ed, Moody slammed Jason Thompson, the U.S. Olympic Committee's USOC, Director of Diversity and Inclusion for insisting on a Winter Olympics team that looks more like America. The Washington Post's Rick Meese, who wrote up his interview with Thompson, openly admits this, in large part, merely means a team with fewer white people on it. T. His year's U.S. Olympic team, not unlike those of most other nations gathering in Pyeongchang this week, is still overwhelmingly white, he laments. We're not quite where we want to be, the USOX Thompson told Meese about the racial makeup of the American Olympic team, adding later, we still have some work to do, we're not quite there yet. Of the U.S. Winter Olympic team, the WAPO's Meese writes, 10 are African American, 4%, and another 10 are Asian American. The rest, by and large, are white. According to 2016 U.S. Census Bureau estimates, white Americans make up 73.3% of the U.S. population, 62% if white identifying Hispanics are counted separately. Accepting Mises' estimate that 92% of the 2018 U.S. Winter Olympic team is white, this would mean whites are overrepresented by 25.5%. Next, however, Mies notes that the much larger Summer Olympic Team USA has a strikingly different racial makeup. The United States took more than 550 athletes to the 2016 Summer Games in Rio de Janeiro. Of that group, more than 125 were African American, about 23%, he writes. The same Census Bureau estimates put Black Americans at 12.6% of the U.S. population meaning blacks were 82.5% overrepresented at the Summer Olympics. If Mises' numbers are correct, the combined winter and summer teams feature 135 black American athletes out of 793 total Olympians. That is to say, they are 17% black and that African Americans are 35% overrepresented, significantly more than the 25.5 figure for white Americans at the Winter Olympics that Meese and Thompson call a lack of diversity that is a priority to rectify. Nowhere in the Washington Post piece about the work in progress to combat the overabundance of whites on the Winter Team USA do Meese or Thompson make any negative implication about the massive overabundance of African Americans on the summer or combined Olympic delegations. Fox News's Moody found this type of squabbling over the exact racial makeup of Team USA and the unrelenting cheerleading for diversity distasteful. It was exactly this WAPO piece to which he was responding when he wrote his op-ed. He criticized the USAC for trotting out what he called, a, frankly, embarrassing laundry list of how many African Americans, Asians and openly gay athletes are on this year's U.S. team. Moody quipped that the USOC would like to change the Olympic motto from faster, higher, stronger to darker, gayer, different, and addressed what he felt was Thompson and Mises' inappropriate concentration on race and sexuality over excellence without regard to differences, writing. Insisting that sports bow to political correctness by assigning teams quotas for race, religion or sexuality is like saying that professional basketball goals will be worth four points if achieved by a minority in that sport, white guys, for instance, instead of the two or three points awarded to black players, who make up 81% of the NBA. Any plans to fix that disparity? Didn't think so. If someone is denied a slot on a team because of prejudice, that's one thing. Complaining that every team isn't a rainbow of political correctness defeats the purpose of sports, which is competition. The response from the left was immediate, unforgiving, and unrelenting. 
Esquire.com's Dave Holmes called Moody's opinion the dumbest thing I've read in ages, Gawker.com Offspring and Jezebel.com Stablemate Deadspin's Lori Wagner incredulously annotated quotes from Moody's piece with Jesus. And huh? And claim the piece quickly spirals into a hysterical, hypothetical riddled screed about right-wingers' favorite target, political correctness. Matthew Nasbaum, Politico's White House reporter, apparently believed comparison to this site, which significantly outdraws his own, was insult enough for Moody's daring to respond to the Washington Post. This is the real lead of a real column by the executive editor of Fox News, he tweeted. Its transformation into a profitable version of Breitbart appears complete. Moody made only passing reference to sexual diversity. Mises piece led with the fact two of the 234 American athletes in Pyeong Chang are openly gay men, but it was the gay that which was most incensed by his editorial. The executive vice president of Fox News targeted some of our nation's top athletes with vicious anti-LGBTQ and biased rhetoric at what should be the proudest moment of their lives, Sarah K. Tellis, president and CEO of the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, GLAD told The Hollywood Reporter. Merely removing the article was not enough for Ellis. She demanded that Moody be made to apologize and that Fox carry articles by gay athletes as recompense for having published the piece at all, saying. These athletes are at the Olympics because they already won by qualifying to represent the United States on the world stage, and they did so despite facing discrimination from places like Fox News throughout their careers. Moody should not only apologize to the athletes and fans for this disgraceful post, but Fox News should open their site for diverse athletes to share their own personal stories and perspectives. The USOC does not have quotas for its Olympic delegation, and to suggest that race, sexuality, or gender orientation are the reasons these incredible athletes made the cut is insulting, repugnant and dismissive of a lifetime of hard work. The gay lobbying group Human Rights Campaign's Stephen Peters told THR, despite the fact Moody never suggested any athlete on the 2018 team was unqualified and was responding to an article explicitly saying it was a priority the team look a certain way. Not to be outdone, Catherine Sakamura, deputy director of the National Center for Lesbian Rights, insisted to THR that Moody's racist and homophobic sentiment demeans our U.S. Olympic athletes who should be celebrated as they represent our country. Having successfully pressured Fox News into tossing Moody's piece down the memory hole, the left offered no respite in their victory. CNN's senior media reporter Oliver Darcy, a former conservative journalist with the Blaze and Campus Reform who now specializes in shaming right-leaning media figures and outlets, called the op-ed inflammatory and then went on his network's CNN newsroom with Brooke Baldwin to school Moody saying. I'm not sure if understands how it works, how you get to the Olympics. It's not a college application. These athletes have, devoted their whole lives to getting to the Olympics, and now they're going and he's somewhat perplexed or upset that they're celebrating the diversity of Team USA, how did it get up on the website? Did he just publish on the website? This is a Fox News executive. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe our channel for more news videos daily and for what's viral today. Also turn on post notifications and don't miss nothing. A thumbs up really makes me blessed.